All right. Well, it's been a long time since I've preached, and uh, so bear with me as I, uh, I get back into the swing of things. Uh, but I guess I want to start by, by asking who has been, who here has been on a long trip before? And uh, you remember the feeling that you get when you finally come back home? Whether, whether it was a good or a bad trip, but especially if it was a bad trip, right? That you go out and you're like, I can't wait to get home. And then you finally get home and maybe even you kiss the floor or something, right? So it, it's so good to, to be back home. Think of that feeling, right? That feeling of, of when you were gone was I'm not where I feel safe. I'm not where I can be myself and, and enjoy life. I'm out in the world and I'm sort of lost, right? Especially if you have a, a trip that doesn't go the way you had planned, right? You're sort of lost and you don't know what's happening. So when you get home, you're, you're, you're back and you're in your home and you're safe, right? So I see that as sort of, sort of the situation that we've been finding ourselves in these past few months, right? I can't, I can't believe it's been how many months, like six months of this. Back in March, we, we got the call from the government that we, we, you know, we weren't allowed to meet as a church anymore in our building. And it's been many months and we, we've been meeting on Zoom and, and doing live streams. But here we are. We're back at the church building. Well, just a few of us are. But at least the worship team and, and I'm back here and I'm able, able to preach again uh, live to you. And so it feels, in a sense, like we finally made it through, or at least we're beginning to make it through, right? That long period of time where we weren't able to do what we used to do and what is comfortable and what is enjoyable in that sense. We haven't been able to worship together. We're still not together like that as a, as a church family, though we are together virtually and in the spirit, of course. And if you add to that, so all of these things that have been happening over these past few months, the pandemic and all the concerns about the virus and the disease and everything that goes along with that has just put an incredible burden on, on all of us, right? Everybody has felt it to some degree, whether it's, you, you, you know, some people lost their jobs, some people had to change the way they did their job, some people actually got the virus and some people got really sick and some people died as a result. And so if you take that and then you add to it all of the unrest that's happening in the United States, right? All the protests, all the riots, all the different things, things that are happening. These last few months, it's almost as if 2020 has been a year of exile, right? Like it's been a year of things are just not the way that they're supposed to be, the way that we are used to. And so all of these things have ha happened and it's like an exile. And what does that word exile mean? It means basically if you are barred from your country, like you're kicked out of your country and you're not able to go back home and you're in a new environment and you're in a different environment, probably not a good environment, right? And so that is what the word exile means. And when I'm talking about exile, I'm obviously thinking about the people of Israel and the, the stories in the Bible about exile. The people of Israel have experienced exile throughout their history, right? It, back in the, uh, the days when they were slaves in Egypt, right? That's, you know, they're not in their homeland. They're not in their pro the, the land that God promised them. They were in, in exile. But then, you know, they finally got to the land of Israel and they set up their kingdom. But what happened? The kingdoms split, the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of Judah, and then each of those nations. So eventually all of the people of Israel were kicked out by foreign powers, and they were exiled. So specifically, the most famous one, of course, is the Babylonian exile. When the Babylonians came and, and destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, and, and, and took captives back to Babylon. Who here knows the famous figure Daniel in, in the Bible? He was a captive. He, he was from Jerusalem. He was from the, the, the country of Judah. And yet, he was brought to Babylon and made to be a part of life there. So the people of Israel are familiar with exile. And it didn't stop there, of course, because even though they were eventually came back, and we're going to talk about that today, you know, by the time we get to the first century, time of, after the time of Jesus, what happened in 70 AD? Well, the Romans were their enemies, and the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and caused again 
for the temple to be destroyed. The second temple was destroyed, and the people of Israel were scattered throughout the whole world. And they were in exile and have been in exile since then, even though that they, they're, they got their country back, you know, back in the 1940s, um, they're still in exile because they're not yet being able to live their life the way they want to. So again, I see this as a perfect metaphor and a perfect illustration for what we go through when we suffer, when we go through challenging times, and 2020 has been a challenging time, right? Amen to that. 2020 has been a challenging time, but God is has brought us through and will do great things through us now that we are beginning, I think, I want to be very positive and very optimistic that this is the beginning of the end of this exile for us here in 2020. We're beginning to see light at the end of the tunnel, and we're going to go towards it, right? And we're going to have a great fall, a great winter, and a great 2021. Let's all pray that 2021 is a much better year than 2020. Now, the interesting thing, and I just want to mention this, for us, for me and Sarah, 2020 has been a challenging year, but it's also been a year of blessing, of course, because we got to welcome our son Jonathan into the world. So I just want to be very clear. 2020 hasn't been all bad, but it's been challenging, right? So anyway, what, what I wanted to say is this. It, when the people of Israel were uh, uh, exiled to Babylon, they were there for many, many years. Let's go to the, this verse in Ezra chapter uh, 1, verse 3. They were given the permission by by uh, Cyrus to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. It says, any of you who are, any of you who are his people, so th this is Cyrus talking to the people of Israel, you, you can go to Jerusalem in Judah to rebuild this temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, and may your God be with you. And so they got the permission from the king to go back to the land of Israel, go back to Jerusalem, and to rebuild the temple. And we learned from history and from the Bible that when the people of Israel got back to their land, they were so excited and reinvigorated, and they had a zeal and, and a passion for God and for the Torah, for his ways. And in fact, that's when we learn, according to history, that that's when you know Judaism as we know it, as it was to become, that's really when it got started, right? Like, you know, being very devoted to the Bible and very, you know, having synagogues and going and, and praying every day, the, the, the Judaism that we now know and what Jesus and the apostles practiced really started when they came back from Babylon. And a lot of people say, a lot of scholars say that the Bible, the, the, the first five books at least, the Torah, was that's when it became solidified and, and put together uh, as we know it, as Jesus would have known it. You know, before then it was perhaps different sources and, and they had different traditions, but then it came together as the five books of Moses that we understand it to be. And so there was, again, an enthusiasm for God after the many years and years of being exiled in the land of Babylon. And so Ezra had determined, let's look at Ezra chapter 7, verse 10, Ezra had determined to study and obey the Torah of the Lord and to teach those decrees and regulations to the people of Israel. And the word there that says determined that he had determined to study the Torah and obey the Torah, is that, it more literally means um, set his heart. So what does it mean like to set your heart to something? Have you ever heard the expression, boy, he had his heart set on that? You know, Have you ever had your heart set on something? What does it mean? It means you really wanted it. You really cared about it, right? You, you had passion for it, enthusiasm for it. And so Ezra who was one of the leaders of Israel after the exile, he says he was determined, he had set his heart to study and obey God's commandments and, his, and his, the, the scripture, the Torah, and to teach them to the people of Israel. So I see that as a, a great, again, another metaphor and illustration for us that as we are coming out of this exile of 2020, of this, all the different things that have been happening, that we should set our hearts on God's word, right? On Jesus himself, who is the manifestation of that word and the, the one who shows us what God is really like. And so we want to open ourselves up to God and say, God, would you help us and inspire us and fill us with your spirit and help us to, to be enthusiastic and passionate about consuming 
your ways and understanding your ways for ourselves and then to share that with others. So you know what, if you get nothing else for today, that's, that's what I, I hope that, that when I say there is life after exile, that we can have a, a true vibrant life now going forward. We can have that vibrant life from God. We can be passionate and enthusiastic about God and about his ways, about living righteous lives and good lives, right? And being a witness to others and sharing the gospel with others and sharing what our church is doing with others, right? So we have to set our hearts on God now that the exile is beginning to end. And we can, we can do that if we look at Scripture, we look at Jesus, and we glean, and we take the wisdom that is in there, and, and we then say, we're going to live our lives according to God's wisdom, and we're going to be able to live in a way that shows that there is life after exile. But let me just say this. Actually, if it, <laughs> we kind of have to do this, because I don't want 2020 to be for nothing, right? Boy, these, like I said, these few months have been challenging, very tough, and for others it's been even worse, right? And there's no point in suffering unless there's a purpose to it. Like, who here likes suffering for no reason, right? Suffering for no reason is, is the worst. So if we're going to suffer, if we're going to have challenging times, let's at least let God make the best of it and take something good out of it. And, of course, one thing I've been saying for the past few weeks and for a long time is one good point that of, of us not meeting together in person is that we were forced to figure out how to live stream and how to get our church connected that way and to go out into the world that way. So that's a good thing. So yeah, it was challenging and I had to learn, we all had to learn a lot about technology, but it was worth it. We suffered in, 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 a, in a way, but there was a point. And so that I would say for this whole year, if, if you've suffered or if you've had any challenges, and I'm pretty sure we all have in some way, don't let it be for nothing, right? Say, God, I want to come out of this, you know, further along than I was before, where I was before, and to be growing in you, and to say, I have a new commitment to you, right? And, and say, I, I, I want to uh, move ahead into the rest of this year and into the next year with a new purpose, with a renewed purpose and, and to sort of say, I, I kind of learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about the world these past few months and now I'm going to be even better because God is with me, right? So, exile is not fun, right? But just like Israel suffered, every time Israel was in exile, they suffered and again, as we're talking about uh, the Babylonian exile, you see, I, as, a, as a Bible student myself, I'm... I, probably most interested in Jesus and the Gospels. Those are the, uh, the era of, of the scripture that I enjoy. But I've really been getting into uh, Ezra and Nehemiah and the time after the Babylonian exile because I'm learning, that, again, as I said earlier, that's when Israel's really got serious about God, right? It, we kind of see the past and there, there was always these terrible kings and all these horrible things. And not to say that the people of Israel were perfect after, after they got back from Babylon, but they said, we don't want to ever go back into exile, right? I never want to have a 2020 again, right? I never want to go through what we went through again. So let's go ahead and make sure that we are serious about God. And that's what Israel did. So we too have had challenging times. But we too, just like Israel, we can come back from exile and have life and say, we're not going to let that be for nothing. And we're going to have a great rest of the year because we're going to be determined, right, set our hearts to know God and to know his ways and to share that with others. So let's just look at some more scripture here because this is what it says in the first, first chapter of Ezra that we're, we're show, in fact, so they got the decree to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. So let's just say, let's just make it easy, especially if we have some younger people here in the audience. Let's just make it really simple so that we all understand, right? Let's just say that somebody, God forbid, somebody came and destroyed our church building. Wouldn't that be terrible? And we couldn't meet here any longer, right? But what about, what if we were to say, okay, we just got the okay from the government to go back and rebuild our church building. Wouldn't that be awesome? And that would mean that we would have to come together and we would have to be very, you know, enthusiastic and diligent 
to say, we're going to rebuild our church building. Well, that's what the people of Israel did when they got back to Jerusalem and they rebuilt the temple there. And it says in Ezra chapter 1, verse 5, then God stirred the hearts of the priests and the Levites. So that, that's like the, 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 the people who led the people in worship. And the leaders of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. So the leaders of all the people. And, and so God stirred their hearts to go to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple of the Lord. And, and the word stirred there, stirred their hearts, refers to being awakened. It's just like when you're asleep and somebody has to go like this to wake you up, right? <laughs> Who here is a sound sleeper, right? And, and that people have to wake you up that way. Yeah, well, that's just it, right? God stirred their hearts, right? Woke them up and said, go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. And that's, again, a perfect metaphor and illustration for us because these past few months, some people have just, you know, been, been taking these few months off and not done anything, maybe, right? For others, it's been finding different ways to be productive and to do things, or whatever it might be, or just the challenge of it all. And so we want to be woken up by God. I want, I, I want us to be woke. And anybody heard, heard that term before? I don't want us to be woke like the world is woke, but I want us to be awake by God, awakened by God to be enthusiastic about him and about how we can see this world be what it should be. So we're no longer in exile. We're no longer, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're making our way through the exile. And just like Israel returned with enthusiasm, we too can be enthusiastic about, in a sense, rebuilding our church, not necessarily physically, but in, in terms of what we're doing, right? Get back on track and, and, and be better than we were, right? to share, to be enthusiastic. And one thing I'm going to ask all of you to do is to share our Facebook posts. Such a simple thing to do, but it's something that will make a huge difference. Whenever we post something on Facebook, share it to your timeline so that all your friends can see it, right? And when we have our live streams, share that with other people. Share our website so that other people can to find out what we're doing and be a part of it. Such a simple thing to do, but it's going to help us to, to rebuild and to, to sort of move past this time of exile. And, and, and that's kind of what we, we also want other people to do, and this is what it says in Ezra 1.6, right? That, and all their neighbors assisted by giving them articles of silver and gold. So they went back to Jerusalem in order to rebuild the temple, and guess what happened? The neighboring countries, like Egypt, for example, helped them out, gave them silver and gold, supplies for the journey, livestock, gave them many, many valuable gifts. So the idea here is we are not going to do this alone. We're going to be calling on people outside, on the internet, out in the world to get excited about what we're doing as a church and the message that we have, that we, there is, we have a message of hope, right? That God can change your life and you can have hope in your life. And we have that message to share and we want other people to join us in that. So the best thing that we can do, again, this is my practical application, is to set your hearts on God, right? Set your hearts on God and his ways for yourself and for your family. Get enthusiastic, get excited about what it is that God could be doing in us, right? And then through us as well, because we can share what we're doing with others. And if you're not comfortable literally verbally talking to people about God or, or about Christian life, then just share what we're doing, what I'm doing, right? Share our Facebook posts, share our website, share our YouTube videos. That's the best thing that we can do is to get enthusiastic and serious about God ourselves and to share that with others. Why? Because there is life after exile and life doesn't happen on its own. In other words, nobody does it alone, right? Nobody lives life on their own. We all rely on one another. I'm an individualist. I, I see everybody as individuals. But we also live in a society. We live in a collective as well. And we, I, there's no way I could do this without all of you helping me, without all of our church family coming together in various ways. And so we do this together. It's a cliche now, but we're in this together, right? And so all of di the different things that are happening, we can do this together. And that's the, the wonderful thing of why 
we would want to get serious about God and why we would want to share it with others is because the more of us that come together, the more of a positive impact we will see and the more life that God has for us will be a reality in more and more people. So that's all well and good, right? And I wanted to start this series with hopefully an inspiring and positive message that there is life after exile. But what about all the turmoil? And guess what? The pandemic is not totally over. And guess what? Lots of people are going through lots of challenging things. And there's all the unrest and riots and turmoil that's going on in the states and the election that's happening, all that sort of thing. So what about the reality of exile? So I want you to join us next Sunday morning as I talk about the reality of exile, about how what is a good Christian response to all of the riots and protests that are happening? How should we feel about that? And I don't mean how should Daniel tell you to feel. I mean, what does God have to say about it? What does morality and the, wi the wisdom of Scripture have to say about it all, right? And so I hope you can join us next week because we, again, have a hopeful message, and it is that there is life after exile. And I, I mean, even with all the stuff that's happening in the States, there is a solution to that, and God has the answer. Let's have the worship team come back. We're going to sing, Here's My Heart, because none of this works unless, again, we make ourselves open to God, and we ask him to, to set our hearts on him and on what is good, and we will have life after exile.